Previously on Spirit Forced. My daughter, ah, she came to me and I said, hey, I'm camping this weekend. And she's like, you know, mom, I think I might want to try that. <laughs> I can't tell you how excited I am. I am so excited to have Madison here and to not camp alone and to have someone with me that, ah. So a bear did try to get into it last year at the end of last year. It's a lot warmer than I'm used to here, so this feels really good. Madison, is it warm? <laughs> Freezing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got it. So stick it and stick it in there. Didn't blow because we're gonna. There we go. I'm blue. I'm red. Ah. Yeah, that was a good one. Yes, it looks like porridge. We're gonna have a little tea chat with you. Here's a little sample of us skiing together. And then Madison will be doing a, um, a challenge. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but it's a good one. So that video will be posting next on part two. Hello and welcome to Spirit Forest. This is part two um, of me camping in my Viking tent with my daughter. And uh, she is 
practicing, I guess, our flint and steel again. If you saw the last video, she actually did a flint and steel fire all by herself, and uh, I was very proud of her. And so she was just sitting there playing, and I brought out the camera. We are going to make some breakfast. Um, we have some bacon and some oatmeal and um, some other random stuff that we're just going to eat. So today's mostly going to be about a challenge that Madison is going to do, which I will talk about a little bit later after breakfast. And um, I think she's excited, but she doesn't know what the challenge is yet. So um, I'm nervous. <laughs> she's, she's a little nervous. I like challenging my kids, you know, I like challenging. This is a fire challenge. We're not in a fire ban yet because we've been in fire bans most of last year. So, um, and I'm pretty sure we're going to be in a fire ban again this year. So I want to get some fire skills in her before we get in another fire ban. Um, this morning, it, last night, okay, let me start over. Last night, I put in a Duraflame into the stove, like I said I was going to. And it lasted till the morning. Not kidding you. Like that fan, if you see the fan on top of my stove right there, that fan was going um until when i woke up it was still going and there were still embers inside the, the stove and so if, i don't know if i filmed it right i was trying to get the camera angle and the lighting wasn't right and i was trying not to wake up madison at the same time because she slept in till about nine <laughs> but um i uh, lit a fire using that ember um from the dura flame um, I think the Duraflame did really well. It kept us warm. However, Madison was cold, but then when I looked over, her sleeping bag was unzipped. <laughs> She's like, I'm cold. I turn on the light and her sleeping bag's unzipped. I'm like, well, it, it, learning. We're, all, we're just <laughs> learning. You know, this was the coldest camping that she's done. It was in the high 20s last night. Um, and she wanted a challenge to come out here and kind of, it's kind of like winter camping, even though it's spring, cause it really feels like winter here, um, at Spirit Forest. However, today is going to be a pretty warm day. So I'm ex very excited. I think it, the last I check, it's going to be about 50 degrees here today. You tired, Madison? <laughs> you need more sleep? Yeah. I need 12 hours of sleep <laughs> to be ideal. Yeah. Teenagers. So, um, let's get, let's get cooking. So, um, again, I just, the, from the last video, know that I just grabbed some food I had in my house because my daughter was like, mom, I want to go camping. Let's have a challenge. And so you don't say no, you just pack up your stuff and you go before they change their mind. <laughs> so I just grabbed a bunch of food I had in my house, so it's nothing any fancy this morning. But I did want to show you this. I've shown it in a couple other videos. I think this is really good for um, either backpacking or camping. It is um, bacon jerky. So it's already cooked, and all you need to do is heat it up. Um, it costs like $6, so it's pretty expensive. But it's so worth it. And... Um, and it doesn't leave all the mess of the fat and all that that you have to deal with. You just you just heat it up and it can be and it tastes just like regular cooked bacon. Um, yeah, I opened the window because it's so hot in here. Um, my stove's it's doing okay. It's doing okay. So I'm gonna put some bacon in there and I'll kind of show you what it looks like here. Looks just like bacon because it is bacon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Um, and then you just heat it up. It was perfect. It's like I, I think we're, I think we're gonna eat butter. all this. Yeah, I can't oh, believe I it's not butter. It looks like butter. Smells like butter. Feels like butter. It's not butter. It's not butter. Okay, so let's get your oatmeal ready. So all I do is I just open up. This is what you're having. Yep. Me too. You like it like I like it, right? Yeah. Kind of pasty. Pasty. Thank you. Oh, wow. You need a spoon. You need a spoon to stir it. It smells like 
bacon. There you the go. Bacon. I love it. So Madison wanted to cook in a tent um, because she's never been able to cook in a tent before because of bears. Now it is bear season right now. Um, however, we're packing this all up. So it doesn't matter if we're cooking in here, we're cooking right out there. We're packing it all up and we're leaving. So um, I told her, yeah, we'll cook in the tent today. <laughs> Yeah, so, but if we were to leave this tent up or if I were to leave this stove um, set up and stuff, I, I probably wouldn't be um, cooking in. I know I wouldn't be cooking in the tent because that smell of bacon is going to be, you know, in the in the fabric and stuff like that. And was, I'm sure um, I'm sure that those bears mm -hmm. love the bacon. <laughs> Madison, are you ready for your challenge? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So it's a fire challenge and it comes with like a little bit of a story. So I'm going to tell you a story. This is a, it's a whole scenario I'm putting you in. So you were out in the wilderness and you were stuck, but you had one match. And so you used it for a one match fire, which is one of your favorite ways to make a fire. And um, so now you have no more matches. It's the next morning. Mm -hmm. And you know that you could possibly be rescued in an open place that is about, I don't know, let's say a half mile away. So what I'm re asking for you to do is transport your fire from one location to another location. Now, obviously we are not in um, a half mile um, distance here, but I think this is a good start to kind of see how you do with this. So again, you're gonna be going from, you're gonna take your fire here and you're gonna create another fire somewhere else using only this fire, no matches, nothing. And the only tools that I'm gonna give you, because the only thing that you had in your backpack was <laughs> a <laughs> was a knife. There you go. That's okay. your knife. And your canteen cup with the lid. That is the only tools that you have to transport your fire. Okay. And to create another fire. Got it? Okay, good luck with your challenge, Madison. So this is a, obviously the first time Madison's ever done this, so it might take a couple tries, but it's all about learning. You got your knife ready? Yeah, I got it ready. And you got your canteen cup ready. And so I'm going to ask her to explain kind of what she's thinking um, and how she's going to do this. So while she's mm -hmm. doing it, and then I'm going to film. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a continuous film, but trust me, we're not cheating. We're going to see if it ta it might take her tw two times to do this. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. That's what makes it the challenge, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what are you going to do first? You got a, we got our fire already um, burning and it's kind of smoldering right now. It's, it's kind of burning out. So let's get started. Madison, what are you going to start first? I'm going to grab a piece of bark and put it in here so the embers don't directly touch the metal. That's a good idea. Yep. Okay, let's go get some bark. Okay. Chip some off of here and break them off. So the embers are going to place directly on top of this inside of here. So it stays a little bit warm. Warmer. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to get my embers. I'm going to grab more than one just in case if some burn out. Now I want to have a backup plan. See if I can drag it in here. Grabbing more than one, just in case for a backup plan. See? And then here's the last one I'm gonna grab. See if I can get that in there. Ah, nailed it. Okay, I grabbed it. Now I'm gonna grab my lid. Go! Put 
the lid cracking on it. So I'm gonna put it right here, but the lid is gonna be slight on it so it doesn't get too much air, but it gets enough air. So now I'm going to grab a bunch of sticks. I'm just gonna snap. And they have to be above the ground just to make sure they're dry. Not only sticks you need, you need grass, the bundle. So I'm gonna go all the way over here. It's the only place. This piece of wood. Put it on. Yeah. This is where I'm going to put my fire. I'm just going to go a little bit flat here. Okay. I'm going to put it right here. Okay, let's just check our. And we're doing now. See how they're doing. Some of them are still alive. So, right now, I'm going to make the, I'm going to fold the grass and like kind of brush it together to make the fibers thinner. So it's easier to light. And while the fire is going, I'm going to grab more sticks that's nearby. Now that I have the bundle ready, I'm going to work on my one match setup. And there's some more sticks over here. Just what you're doing. I'm making a feather stick so it's easier to light up. So we have more stuff. So I have some feathers on my feather stick and I'm going to put, yep, I'm going to put some little sticks in there near the embers so it'll help absorb them, kind of. And put some grass in there too. Yeah, the biggest one I have still 
has embers on it. And right now I'm going to put it inside the tinder bundle. And I should have grabbed more grass, I noticed. I didn't have time though. Let's see if we can have some. So I have one more and it's done. So for round two, what would you change? Bigger tinder bundle, more sticks. More sticks? Maybe closer together too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's try for round two. Okay. This time I'm going to grab bigger embers because I knew that the bigger embers last longer. So, I'm going to grab this one, grab this one, and grab this one back here. Okay. Yep. The more, the merrier. Now I'm going to grab my lid. Crack it open. So I'm going to look on fire here. My embers here. Crack it open. So and now I need to be quicker. Remember to remain calm. You have a knife in your hand. Remain calm. It's okay. This 
time I'm gonna have two tinder bundles. One in the teepee, one in outside. So there's more fibers for the fire to feed on. Also, oh that's happening. I'm also going to grab some more grass for the fire to feed it. Well, the embers to feed it. Okay. I got grass and now I'm going feed my fire. It's smoking there. Let's see if I'll do that. too much grass. Now, what I learned from last time, two tinder bundles, more fibers, and more sticks too. Last time I noticed that it was just running out of sticks to catch flame because it's too much air. So, I'm gonna get more sticks. Small to biggest one to fours. Well, not really fours, but yeah. Alright. So, let's do more. And also, you want it to have a TP shape, also, so you can stick your ember in there. I might add some more. So I kept some grass out just to feed it, just in case if it needs more. So, making the fibers very thin. Because when I blew on it, I also noticed that the fibers weren't thin enough. So, I'm gonna put it in there, blow on it. So, I'm going to choose the best one. So this one has some flame to it. Yeah, it does. Let's see if this will work. Okay. Stick it in there.
Let's see if I can light this one. Let's see if I can break this one. I'm also going to use the burnouts that I had last time. Okay. Second time. <laughs> I think you got it, Madison. I think you got it. I think you did good. Well, so what did you learn from this one? My Tinder bundle needs to be bigger. Yep. And I need to add more sticks to be more compact. Yep. And I need to loosen the fibers a little bit more in the tinker bottle. Because yeah. Because it took a couple blows to make it light. And, and sometimes with more of a steady blow rather than really hard ones like the ones you were doing, because that's going to wear you out, mm -hmm. the more steady blow works really well too. I mean, obviously you got it, so it worked. Yeah. Congratulations. Good job on your fire challenge, Madison. Thank you. That's a lot. <laughs> you did good though. That was your first time trying to transport fire. And your first weekend of um, blowing a, uh, a, um, <clears throat> a ember into a flame. You've never done that before. So this was this is all new for you this weekend. Oh yeah. Yeah. has been over one minute. It has been. You have beat your challenge. You will survive. You'd have yeah. to hike back a half mile and try it again, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you would have survived. <laughs> yeah. And if it was like emergency, I would have started sooner. Yep. Because our fire was a little bit on the like downside. Yeah. It's kind of running out. You think it's a good skill to be able to transport a fire, right? Yeah. And why do you think so? Because if you're lost, or like, the weather could also change mm -hmm. too, very quickly. So you need like a drier climate or a harder surface. Yeah. And also animals too. Yeah. Possibly. No. I think one of the things that we learn too is that what kind of gear we want to keep in our in our packs too. By having something that is metal that you can um, transport embers in would be pretty handy. We don't always have that in our packs, do we? No, not really. No, but maybe in um, some remote places it might be a good idea to have something that's that's metal that you can transport stuff in. Yeah. Instead of all of our Nalgene bottles and stuff where you can't really do anything with when it comes to a fire, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you did good though. I'm really impressed with you. Good job, Madison. Thank you. I think Madison did really well, really well. She's uh, she's really proud of herself right now, and I feel it's a life skill, um, you know. And it, it takes more practice too. I mean, if you, to get to go to like a half mile to a mile, you know, knowing to um, feed that canteen cup with um, some more twigs and sticks and stuff like that. Um, I gave her very little direction, and so she did very good. Um, I just helped her out a little bit with her one match fire. She has not made a fire since, um, shoot, it was over a year ago. 
that she's made a fire. So it was probably back in January was the last time she made a fire. Um, and so I'm really impressed with her. It shows that, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing my job right and teaching her. And uh, I do recommend, you know, a lot of times on my channel, I do recommend for, for others, if you're a grandparent or, um, or maybe an uncle or aunt, or you have kids of your own, you know, to teach them these skills because I really feel that they're being lost. And, um, and a lot of people that um, didn't survive in the wilderness here in Colorado would have survived if they just had some of these skills. So um, please teach others um, how to do it and teach yourself as well. Um, it is a life skill is how I see it. We go um, backpacking all the time, um, so we're always at risk into the, the wilderness, and so I want to make sure that, that she knows what to do. And it's kind of fun, you know what I mean? It's kind of fun. It's a, it's a nice bonding experience um, with each other as well, you know, and, and seeing her very proud of herself is, is really good too, and that's, that's truly what I want. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy, and she did a really good job. So thank you, and uh, we're going to be packing up here soon, but we're not going to say goodbye just yet, um, but we're going to pack up here soon and pack up the Viking tent, and uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so my mom just packed up the tent and my mom asked me to reflect on my weekend this week. So um, she provided me three questions and I'm going to answer them for you guys. So the first question is how do I think about, what do I think about the big um, Viking tent? And it, I, I think it's really cool because it's handmade and I couldn't imagine how how she even put inside her head to even make this. It's really cool and it's actually, um, we didn't get wet at all when it was snowing, hailing, so, and it, was, and it kept really warm too. So the second question is what would what do I think about like how was my camping experience? So my camping experience it was pretty cold for me cuz it's the coldest that I've been in a tent outside. So 
it was really cold, but it was kind of, it was really worth it though. Like in the middle of the night, sometimes I got cold on my feet, but that was normal for me because just like mom, my feet get really cold and my hands get really cold too. But the tent actually stayed really warm throughout the night. The Dura flame really held up and it was really awesome. So question three is, would I do this again? It's a tough question, but I would say yes. If the weather was just like this next year, I would totally do it because I'm a, I'm a little wimp at bugs for me because I do not like bugs at all. So this, this camping experience for me, I didn't need to worry a bit about bugs at all. It was pretty, pretty relaxing. And so it was kind of cold. So next time I would maybe choose better to <laughs> zip up my sleeping bag <laughs> fully. Yeah. So yeah, and I would totally do this again because what what's the stove's name? What what's the stove's name? The sir stoves. A little bit. Yeah, little bit like held up, and she was really warm. <laughs> So, I would do this again. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye!